Hi, welcome to downtown Topeka Rotary. My name is Mark and I'm your president. Uh, we're glad you're here. Please uh, start off with one verse of uh, America. Thank you. <laughs> So that's why I step away from the microphone. Please be seated. Uh, Val is going to do our rotary minute and introduce our guests. Val. So I am the club photographer today, so what we're going to start off real quick doing, so I can take a picture of me take, doing the rotary minute, so we'll do a selfie with everybody. So here we go. Over this way. All right. Very good. Okay, so for the rotary minute, I, of course, come unprepared. So what I'm going to do is talk about the experience I have had with the mentorship program here with Rotary. Um, I also I want to make sure I start off with thanking Lee Morris for inviting me to be a part of this. It has been a wonderful experience to work with Lee and work with Fred on this program because I have been introduced to one of the most wonderful students that has enlightened my life. Her name is Raina Easter and she is a junior at the at Highland Park High School and uh, I have been able to have a couple of lunches with her. I'm helping her get a job at Walmart. I'm helping her get enrolled with Washburn Tech so she can start taking classes uh, next year, uh, next fall. And also we're working on helping her with her ACT test, which are happening this week. So, um, so yeah, it's been just a truly remarkable experience. And this past weekend, I was able to meet with Rebecca Crotty and her mentor, uh, Gracie. And we just had a lunch that was full of laughter, and uh, those two students really keep me young. So it's just really nice to be able to have that experience. So if anybody's involved in the mentorship program, if you could stand, and I just want to give everybody a round of applause because it takes a lot of time, but it's so, so rewarding. So. Thank you, Lee, for spearheading all of this because it is definitely a wonderful experience. So we're going to go ahead and start with guest introductions. So this will be fun as well because I'm going to take pictures of our guests. So I'm going to introduce them um, as I go down to the floor here. So once I introduce you, please stand up and I'm going to take your picture and everybody is going to welcome you to the club. Our first guest that I have is Jen Chen from, uh, she's a Rotarian from the Shawnee Club. So Jen, if you wouldn't mind, and she's going to be in the back of her. Hi, Jen. While she's making her way up here, I want to remind you that our featured charity this month is the Wonderful Works Deliverance Center. Uh, they are located at 815 Southwest 5th Street, Central Topeka. They requested funds for their after-school program where they feed about 30 children daily during the school year and have a summer camp for 10 weeks where they offer three meals per day. Most of their children attend Meadows Elementary. So uh, thank you for giving generously to the cup fund. Anita. Well, do we have a celebration today. 
Remember last week, Dick and Grace made this major appeal to support Blanche Parks as a district governor and raise money to put, help put on this conference? Did you respond to them? In less than an hour, we raised over $3,000. That says so, so, so much about Rotary, so much about this club, so much about each of you. If you're comfortable standing, if you were one of those contributors, we'd like to applaud you separately. I mean, co collectively. <laughs> and now, if you didn't, get the chance, if you weren't here, you didn't hear about it, or you wanted to think about it, and still would like to contribute, it's not too late, believe me. We are about halfway to our goal. Some expenses keep kind of popping up, as they do when you're planning a big, major event. So on your table, there's a, that piece of paper from last week. It's still there, waiting for you. If you would consider making a contribution, you know where Grace is, you know where Dick is, find them after the meeting. Even Blanche will probably accept your check, wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, so this is all in the interest of a fabulous district conference. We think we have the opportunity to really blow us out of the water and put Topeka on the map for the wonderful people that are making this happen. Now, also, you can not only contribute your money, but you can contribute your time. And there's another sheet on the table for you to sign, a little study what you might like to do to help. We're going to have uh, identification for each of you as the host club. It's a privilege to have the district of Lunar Club, and we be the host club, and the opportunity to help out uh, that day of the conference as well as leading up to it. So please uh, look at that. And then thirdly, and very importantly, Linda assures me that tomorrow we will have our registration live. So go to uh, your computer, sign up, ready. if you want to register at the Cyrus Hotel, we have saved a block of rooms. We know they're going to sell out pretty quickly. And if you have an interest in staying there, take advantage of the $139 rate and sign up, but do it quickly, and register for the whole conference. So thank you ever so much. Thanks to you great volunteers that are helping to make this happen. Thank you, Anita. And uh, we also, uh, recently started a friend X program. It's a new program where we have a chance to uh, uh, honor each other's milestones and encourage each other throughout the year in a way that uh, is anonymous until the end of the year. And we want to take at least every other week, if not every week, to recognize anybody who uh, wants to say thank you to their friend X uh, partner. So are there are there any friend X uh, thank yous? Larry uh, Goronsky, do you want to start? Uh, I would like to thank my friend X for getting a lovely on the occasion of my 40th wedding anniversary. And thank you so much. I appreciate it. Grace, would you like that? I would like to thank my friend X for a lovely birthday card and Valentine's card, day card, which came on the same day, and for a very nice gift card to Blackbird Coffee Shop, which I love. So thank you very much, whoever you are. <laughs> thank you. Are there any other friend X? Thank you. Yes, please. I got a very nice birthday card for my friend X as well. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, as we keep going, uh, we also have more applications for anybody. If they want to sign up for the Friend X program, it's not too late to do that. And uh, as we continue to have more and more Friend X activity throughout the year, please remember those and uh, come armed to our meeting with those. And now, without further ado, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Dick Knoll, who will introduce our speaker today. Dick. President Mark. General Richard Myers returned to his home state and alma mater to serve Kansas State University as its 14th president. 
<clears throat> graduated from K-State in 1965 with a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and joined the Air Force through the uh, ROTC program at K-State. The native Kansan from Merriam, uh, Merriam loyally served his country and retired as a four-star general. From 2001 to 2005, he served as the 15th chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and was a principal military advisor to the president, to the um, Secretary of Defense and the National Security Council. He was the highest ranking officer in the United States Armed Forces at the time. Throughout uh, Myers' active duty, he continued to close a close relationship with K-State. In 2000, he presented the 118th Landon Lecture. Uh, General Myers, uh, the General uh, Richard B. Myers Hall is home of the Army and Air Force ROTC programs, and the building is named in his honor. Uh, Myers is also a foundation professor of military history and leadership at K-State. He and his wife, Mary Jo, serve as co-chairs of the Kansas State University Innovation and Inspiration campaign to raise $1 billion. Please join me in welcoming to the dais General Richard Myers, President of Kansas State University. It's great to be with you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, the campaign is actually a $1.4 billion campaign. When I became uh, president, uh, they said, you know, if you're around here, maybe we could do a little better than a billion. So they went to 1.4. It's supposed to end uh, next year in June. We're at 1.33 right now. So we're going to cross 1.4 by the, well, who knows, but I mean, I think um, fairly soon this year, and then we'll have. I bet we wind up around 1.5, but just to put that in context, that's a lot of friends and corporations that have a passion for Kansas State, and uh, you got to raise that much money today if you're uh, if you're going to adapt to the, the budget cuts we've taken from the state. The state's cut 85 million from higher education over the last 10 years, and if you want to keep it affordable, a lot of that philanthropy goes to scholarships. If you want to keep it affordable, you've got to do this. Every university is uh, and we're just blessed that we have a passionate alumni base and a great foundation that is adept at doing this work. So, I actually never thought I'd be standing up in Topeka in front of the Rotary, which, by the way, I'm not Rotarian, but I love the organization, and I speak to many Rotary clubs, and I, I love it. Uh, I, I like your mission, I like the way you do your business, and, and all of that. Um, Never thought I'd be standing here. It was John Weefel. I don't think you remember President Weefel, but he was president of K-State for about 20-some years. When I was retiring from the military, he sent an envoy to, to Washington, D.C. and said, here's the deal, John Myers. We know when you retire, you're going to do a lot of things, a lot of different things. We'd like one of those to be K-State. So uh, we'd like to have this relationship. We'll give you a little stipend, come to campus four or five times a year. And that started a relationship post-military where I was on the foundation board, eventually chair of that board. I did some teaching up there. Uh, in 2006, I gave President Weefall a lot of credit for his fishing expedition, but in 2006, he, uh, he got approval from the Board of Regents to name the Military Science Building for, for me, which was a, a great honor. It's a great honor you don't have to die to have something named for you, and you don't have to pay for it. And uh, although my, my wife and I are now paying some for it because uh, the building's old, it's one of the oldest buildings on campus. Uh, one of the custodians called me one weekday. I was walking around, he was the senior custodian for several buildings. He says, hey, President, you need to know, your building, it's got the worst toilets on campus. I wouldn't let my daughter go into any of those toilets. So that Saturday, I went through all the toilets, or I think three of them, and they were they were just like they were in 1960. When I went they were horrible. They smelled. They were not modern. None of the none of the code things you would have today. So Mary Jo and I said, "Well, that'll be we've saved some money, so that'll be part of our donation. We'll go to the toilets." 
They said, do you want your name on a toilet? I said, oh, no. I don't want anybody in particular, most people don't know, I don't want anybody in particular to know. I just, I think it's important if I have, my name's on the building, we ought to have toilets that at least people don't have to hold the nose when they go in. Um, so then in April of 16, I was driving down Interstate 70, um, probably just past the peak on the way to Manhattan. And I got a call from one of the Board of Regents who said, hey, uh, President Schultz just left, or has just taken a job at Washington State, and the campus is nervous. They're feeling unloved, and uh, because it was a closed search, nobody knew Kirk was leaving, and everybody loved Kirk in the while. I knew him well, and I loved him. And then, so it was a kind of a shock to campus, and he said, it'd really be helpful uh, would you be open to being the interim president while we do a search? And um, my wife was with me. She says, no, no, tell them no, tell them no. <laughs> well, I mean, we got our families in Virginia. We got kids back there, our six grandkids, one on the way. And, and so I was, I was transitioning to a, what I thought would be a quieter life. Uh, and and I, I don't think I ever told him yes, but I got a call from the president of the board the next day, he said, the announcement's going out tomorrow. And my wife said, you agreed to that? And I said, I must have, because they're going to announce it. So, so I became in room, but the proviso was, I'll do this for six months or until December of 16. <coughs> if you don't find somebody, I'm gone, because I'm going back home. And then I got to campus, and especially when the kids started coming back, the young folks came, came back in, uh, in August, um, I really liked it. I liked the environment. I liked the way... I like the challenges we have here in Kansas for higher education. I've just come, spent all morning in the legislature. Last night with senators at dinner, all talking higher education and support for higher education. I like that. I like that work. I do it uh, arm in arm with Doug DeRoff, Chancellor at uh, KU. We we figure that our priorities are the state, higher education, then our institutions. That's kind of how we prioritize things. So uh, we always we tend to always try to come together to these sorts of things so we can bring both KU and K-State presence when we, when we talk about this stuff. Um, even, even Coach Snyder came up and said, Myers, you know, you fit in here real well. Why don't you just stay? Why don't you apply and, and hopefully they'll select you and you can stay here. And I looked at Coach, I said, well, Coach, I'm too old. Uh, <laughs> coach is a couple of years older, but not that much older. So Coach went, are you serious? <laughs> so I, said, I got a coach, I, I goofed there. I got, I got it. I'm, maybe I'm not too old by your standards. Um, and uh, after talking over with the family, the family said, we'll support whatever you want to do, we're going to support you. I uh, decided I'd throw my hat in the ring and was chosen. I got to tell you, it's, uh, somebody mentioned feeling young. So uh, there's this country song, I can't tell you who, who made it popular, but it's uh, about a guy going through divorce or girlfriend left versus I'm. Like, I'm too uh, young to feel this old, is the title of the song, I think. And I was listening to that coming down the highway one day, I said, that's interesting, I'm too young to feel that old. And I just turned around, I'm too old to feel this young. <laughs> this, this is energizing when you're on a campus, when you have lots of challenges, when you try to make a difference. But I gotta tell you, coming back to my home state, which I'm very proud of, I grew up in Shawnee Mission when there was one, and then I finished Shawnee Mission when there was two Shawnee Mission high schools. Um, Ran track against some of your finest athletes here out of Topeka at the KU Relays. I mean, all that experience was really uh, important to me. And when you join the military, you go away for four years, and then you live on the East Coast. You just don't have that much connection with the state. And it's nice to come back. We are living on campus in the president's residence, which is a, a stone's throw from the chapel on campus where we were married in 1965. So it's like we've come full circle. And this is too much, but it's almost like it's meant to be. I mean, somebody said, here's the plot. But they never told me I was, I'm supposed to be in Virginia kind of winding down life, and that's not the way it's working out. Uh, K-State, I, I think we're doing very well. We've got some challenges. Uh, one of our challenges is over the last several years, we've lost uh, about 2,000 students in enrollment. Part of that is international students, which are down across the country. Part of it is Kansans graduating from high school, but not going on to higher ed, at least in this state. Um, and part of it's transfer students. I mean, there's, a, there's a whole lot of uh, things going on here, that some of which we understand, some of which we don't. But we know we need to increase our enrollment. So uh, we are doing some dramatic things. Over the last year, we've had a national, national consultant come in, look at our situation, give us some advice. There, It was really good advice. We could not have done this without this consultant, because they're 
their national view, their reliance on data is, is something we couldn't have done. And we are on a path now to almost completely reorganize how we do our recruitment, how we do scholarships, on and on it goes. And I'll save some time for Q&A if you want to ask some questions around that. Uh, the bottom line is uh, we're going to try to up our percentage of out-of-state students as well. So we're about somewhere between 17 18 percent out of state um, so we're, we're 80 20 ku is uh, 60 in 40 out uh, we're going to go more to solidly 80 20. we're a little less than 20 right now uh, we get students from all all 50 states in some places we do really well in recruiting so we're tailoring our, our branding and our recruiting efforts to particular places uh, particularly the surrounding states i'll also mention california we get a lot of students from california amazingly enough um, one of my, I was giving a ride in my golf cart the other day, and he's going to the theater music building, and I said, uh, so what, what are you going to do there? And he says, well, I'm a theater major. Young guy, freshman, theater major from California. That's pretty cool. Um, and every school has their stories. They come from all over, and they get inspired by faculty or programs, and, and off they go. Um, so we're, we're going to be successful in that. We're gonna, we want to get the moment back to where it was. And uh, we think we can do that in about three years or so. And then at that point, because that's your revenue. You get state money and you get tuition. And those are your revenue buckets. And when one of those goes down, and both of them have gone down recently, they put you in a real budget crunch. And uh, if you talk to any of our professors or staff out of Kansas State, uh, we are in some tight budget conditions. So is KU, for maybe a little different reason, but they've, they've had some tough budget conditions as well. So. Uh, we'll work through that. We've got great people at K-State that, that want to work through it. So that's one. That's enrollment. And by the way, we say enrollment, that's our strategic plan. Uh, but it also includes student success. So we have the best success statistics in the state. Some schools are as good as we are in some areas, but we have the best overall. And we're proud of that, but they're not good enough. So uh, our, our graduation rates and all that sort of stuff, um, are not good enough. Uh, if you're a white male, they're great. If you're a black male coming in, or first generation coming in, they're not as good. And, and there's a lot of reasons for that, and we gotta fix that. There's no reason we have to have that disparity. So we're, we're working all those pieces, trying to, to try to make sure that when somebody commits to Kansas State, we commit to getting them through. It's kind of our moral obligation, the way we look at it. And it's not easy, but other people have been very successful with that. Uh, we need to be more successful. So overall statistic, I it's good. But if you start breaking it up, you can find some cohorts that aren't prospering. And I would say a lot of that's probably financial. It's not academic performance. It's usually around financial issues. Um, we, we lost, uh, we, we were losing two icons. Coach Snyder retired in, in December. He means so much to the state of Kansas, to Manhattan, to our university. If you think about what he's done for us, our state, just to have that man around. And so when he decided to retire, that's a, that's a big deal. And that was followed fairly shortly by another K-State icon, some of you may know, is our Dean of Students, Vice President for Student Life, Pat Bosco. Pat's been there 40 years. Uh, he came from New Jersey to go to school and never left. He was student body president, and then he started working in student life, and pretty soon he's the guru. If we want to pose a sale on a student coming to K-State, we put them in the room with Pat. And they come out, and they've already signed their, they got their dorm assignment, their residence hall, they're ready to go. Uh, Pat is the closer. He's got so much enthusiasm about our university. He promised his wife Sue he'd retire at the age of 70, that's this summer. And so he said, I'm leaving. And so we've got to search on for that person. But those are, that really hurts your, your community when you lose two icons that, that even if you don't like K-State, you gotta respect these individuals for what they've given to, uh, higher education and to developing young men. Uh, our football program has the best APR rate the Big 12 has for 12 years, or eight years, and that's what Bill Snyder brings to it. That's what, that's what he does. He develops these young guys. Um, we also have some budget issues, so we're redesigning our, our budget model, and the only reason I mention this is, is, is what it's gonna do for us. When you mention budget around a college campus, everybody gets on edge pretty fast. As you might imagine, almost any place, any business. I mean, people start doing that. It's all good budget. So the way we have been uh, allocating our budget is based on what you got last year. So it didn't matter if you're performing better, or performing worse. You got the same amount. We're changing that to uh, tie that to student credit hour production, uh, which is called uh, responsibility center management. It's, it's used by a lot of universities. 
What it's going to bring to us is greater transparency, not only on the revenue producers, those producing student credit hours, but on the cost. We have seven cost centers, IT, library, president's office, that kind of stuff. And those people pay those costs. The ones producing the revenue are going to demand that we be efficient. It's going to create a great dynamic, and it's going to put, put the cost, make it transparent to everybody, know what it really costs us to do, do business. Uh, up to now, we have not really known. Uh, it, was a, it was a bad day for athletics when we said, <laughs> you know, we're providing you IT services, and you don't pay us enough for those, because we know what that costs now. And so they're not the only ones. There are a lot of us who didn't know those cost, and they have to figure that out. But transparency, and it's also going to create innovation. And I think today's universities have to be more agile, agile and flexible as we, as we develop different pathways to get a degree or get some sort of credentials. Uh, this is going to create uh, an innovative spirit, an entrepreneurial spirit among those that want to prosper. Because if you have curriculum that is no longer needed out there or in, in demand, you may have to, to change a little bit. We have a new provost, his name is Dr. Chuck Tabor. He came to us from Sunnybrook University where he'd been for over two decades on Long Island. And your first thought is, how can this guy be a fit in Manhattan, Kansas? Let me tell you, we had, we had five finalists for that job. He is the best fit. You would not believe how well he's fit in. He's been longing to be part of a community. And you saw that in Manhattan. I think you see the same thing in Lawrence, but a community that's involved in the university and vice versa. Um, he spent his first 16 years as a missionary son in Africa. I think that kind of helped shape some of his thoughts on, on things. But he, he's had experiences at Sony Brook. So let me give you an example of entrepreneurship, <coughs> entrepreneurship and uh, innovative thought. They had a great art department there, but under this same model that we're using, this responsibility centered management, the art department says, you know, we're not producing a lot of student credit arts. We're in danger of being made a lot smaller or maybe even going away. And so they put their thinking caps on and they decided they would be, have a new curriculum around art curation. And guess what? They're only not too far from New York City. There are a lot of places where you need curators. Uh, now it is the, the biggest and most recognizable school in art curation in the country. So they just rethought <coughs> their, their purpose. That's what we're hoping to drive at K-State as well. And, uh, and we're gonna face this in, in a way that nobody, nobody falls off the cliff. We're not gonna just, one day you have money, the next day you don't. Everything's going to be phased in. Uh, we don't anticipate uh, losing people over this. That's not our anticipation. We never know, but that's not our anticipation. The last thing I would say is about the National Biomarker Defense Facility, which you know is going up in Manhattan, a $1.25 billion building. You ought to stop by and see what $1.25 billion of your taxpayer money goes to, but it's <coughs> huge. And what you see is not the part underground. Uh, you had to be there when the hole was dug, which is pretty impressive, and now it's three stories above ground level. Um, that's where they're going to study the worst, uh, the worst pathogens uh, that, that we see in animals, the worst diseases, the body. It's a level four lab, meaning that those who work in there, if they get exposed to these certain pathogens, there's no cure. So uh, the, the protocol they go through to be bound up and they look like they're in spacesuits when they're doing this sort of work. Uh, but also those diseases that pass from animals to humans, and Ebola would be a good example. So we'll be looking at Ebola in, uh, in that laboratory as well. Uh, that is an asset for all of Kansas. Well, it's actually for the world, for the nation for sure, it's, uh, but it's particularly Kansas. And it really is all about health, animal and human. So there's going to be a lot of spinoffs from that effort, from that lab, the people that want to be around uh, that, that enterprise. Uh, I think all the way down, we call the Animal Health Quarter to Columbia, Missouri, but particularly Kansas City, Lawrence, and Manhattan. Uh, Cape Med, uh, the medical piece has to be a big piece of this as well. So I think a lot of Kansans are going to benefit from the, the uh, level of research that goes on there. The companies that want us to bring up, we have uh, a couple of foreign companies in the vaccine uh, production business that, want, that have already rented space in Manhattan, and we're building out of <coughs> an office park on the north side of campus with the help from our foundation and the infrastructure with help from the city. Great partnership with Manhattan in this. I mean, we're all kind of on the same sheet of music trying to get the infrastructure ready for what the National bio Agro Defense Facility is going to bring to the state of Kansas. Tom Daschle, former Senate Majority Leader from South Dakota, when he visited and saw what we had at K-State, 
uh, a couple of years ago coined, the, coined this as the uh, Silicon Valley of bioagro defense. We got to live up to that. We can be that place. Not a bad place to be. We do think it'll create a lot of innovation and bring in a lot of uh, high tech sort of firms to be around this, the health issue and disease in both animals and humans. And we'll see how that plays out. We're trying to leverage that. I think with that, I'm going to stop and ask for questions on any subject you want to talk about. And we've got about nine minutes, according to your clock, before people start <coughs> leaving. I've got to mention the papers back there. Uh, my KU friends, we were on a we were on a Big 12 cruise to Alaska. Just it seemed like years ago, just last summer, and uh, we had lots of nice discussions on uh, on higher education and on basketball. As you may know. Anyway, nice to see you guys. I did not expect to see you here. That's great. Right. Thank you both. So, yes, sir. Uh, I'm a proud K State grad, uh, but looking back. From the time that I was uh, there uh, and comparing it to today, it seems like just from observation that the higher education across the board has gotten so expensive. You know, when I went there, it was affordable enough that if you weren't a, uh, an affluent person, you could. You could work summer jobs and, and pay your way through school as you win and not accrue uh, a ton of student loan debt. Right. How has that been addressed across the full spectrum of higher education? Because it just seems like it's getting priced out of uh, the feasibility for a large pop, you know, large segment of our population. You're absolutely right. And so uh, I didn't bring any charts. If I had a chart, I'd show you. Uh, <clears throat> so back when you were going to school, back when I was going to school, state appropriations to our operating budget were over 60%. They're now 20%. So the, the lines cross in about 2011, where we're actually getting a lot more revenue from tuition than we do from state revenue, the state, uh, state operating budget. Um, that's a problem. Our cost over the last 10 years has gone up minuscule amount. Actual cost per full-time equivalent student per credit hour has stayed basically flat. So when people say, well, the cost of education has gone up, uh, at least in the state of Kansas, I think the same is true for Kansas, uh, Kansas University. It's not true. If the cost has not gone up, who pays? Who pays has gone up. And I mentioned the state taking $85 million out of higher education. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, directed at anything. They just didn't have the money. So they just had to cut everybody. Everybody got cut. Every state, you all know that. Somebody probably worked in one of these various state agencies. Everybody's been cut. Uh, that shifts the burden to the student and the families. And that is a real problem. And that is going to create a situation where you have the, the haves and the have-nots. And that's not good for our state. If you look at any study you want to look at, they all say the jobs of the future are going to require education beyond high school. Not all college education, but beyond high school. Uh, we're not setting ourselves up for success there. Uh, we've got a lot of first-generation students. We've got a lot of folks that, uh, a lot of first-generation students, students don't have a, uh, sometimes don't have the financial wherewithal to go to school. That's why I mentioned earlier scholarships. We'll try to make all that difference up, but in the end, it's still, it's still expensive. In a relative sense, in Kansas, it's not particularly expensive. Our out-of-state tuition, which is double in-state, is, uh, is cheaper than in-state tuition in the state of Illinois, for instance. So a lot of states have really made their life difficult. Uh, but, but we are worried about that. And that's what we talked to the legislature about. And uh, last year, we had the lowest tuition increase at K-State. Uh, people, the Board of Regents said, you better ask for more money, Myers. You're not going to be able to operate your, we asked for less than a percent increase. Um, we thought we were just going to suck it up because we don't want to put that burden on the students. Access is what a land grant institution is about. And if we can't provide access, then we're not doing our mission. So you're absolutely right. Uh, it's not that the cost is going up, it's that the cost burden is shifting. Uh, average debt for a K-Stater, average debt is 25,000, 24 something. So that's not, a, depending on what your degree in, that's not a lot of money. Now, if your degree's in something that's not gonna get you a good job right away, that's a lot of money. Uh, and that doesn't include vet medicine. If you're, how many veterinarians do we have in here? Any? If you're if you're a veterinarian and you're gonna and, and you're gonna pay that tuition bill, 
Um, it's really hard to amortize it over your career. It's a tough one for vets. We still we still get more applicants that we can handle in vet school, but that's that's another issue. But that, that, they're kind of a special entity. I don't know how medical school stacks up. They're probably similar. But you're right, and and we're trying. We're, we're, that's why I spent half a day with the legislature. I had uh, dinner last night with uh, six members of the five members of the Ways and Means Senate Ways and Means Committee. That's along with Doug Gerard. We're trying to uh, trying to get some help. We've asked for we've asked for restoration of the 85 million, 50 million this year, uh, 35 next year. Um, I don't know that we we'll get there. We've got there's some bills that we get some of that money. Um, it's it's tough. It's tough, but it's still a tough budget environment in the state of Kansas. And well, a lot of other demands. I, I recall that uh, you know, I, I know money's worth a lot less today than it was back in like '75. But uh, you know, we were able to uh, stay at uh, Jarron Terrace at the time. We were lucky enough to get a two-bedroom for 105 dollars a month permitting utilities pay and, and that made it so that yeah. you know, we could afford to yeah. go there and work our way through school. Yeah. Now, I mean, <coughs> you know, the, the new Jardine Terrace is a much nicer facility, uh, costs a lot more, but, you know, where are the alternatives for people that want to live uh, less expensively? So we have lots of alternatives, in either university run housing, so the old Jardine is still there, been renovated. It's cheaper than the new Jardine. That's more expensive than the cheapest residence hall. And the new Weefall Hall, where, by the way, more people want to live in the new one, which is expensive, then we have pretty inexpensive, well, less expensive alternatives. So you're right. And we also have the neighborhoods. They can live in a, they can live, they can rent there pretty cheap too. So. Yeah, time goes on, inflation goes up, it is more expensive. It's, an, it's not an easy proposition. Other questions? You are so easy. Yes, sir. General, what, uh, what's K-State doing to help veterans, especially younger veterans, who are coming back and <coughs> interested in assimilating into college life? We know they've experienced some things that traditional students haven't and there are some challenges there for them. There are, and so we have about 12% of our student body our veterans or family members of veterans. Um, we have a pretty aggressive program around that. We have a veteran center in one of our student groups, and the sole purpose is to help people that have been carrying a rucksack or flying a plane, whatever they've been doing, as they come into the academic environment, to make sure they're aware of all the things that they can avail themselves of in terms of help, whether it's federal or state or on-campus help, and to be a support system for one another as they as they make this transition, which is really really important. So, uh, we want them obviously to be very very successful. We also have research going on in our soon to be named it's currently the College of Human Ecology. We're renaming it to uh, College of Health and Human Sciences. But we've got research going on there that talks about family resiliency, and they work with Fort Riley to, with resilience programs and counseling uh, and around research that they've done to help our Army family members and active duty members be more resilient and so forth. It all goes hand in hand. But we spend a, the good news is we're next to Fort Riley. We, we do, um, we've got a great partnership with them. Uh, the leadership at Fort Riley knows us, we know them. And on down in the ranks, we even take care of their horses and their mounted, their mounted color guard. Uh, the Army doesn't pay them enough money to give them proper pet care, so we do that pro bono. Uh, but that's a trivial thing, but I mean, we do that. Uh, just because we have this great relationship so yes uh, that we're all over that we try to be all over that and we take any suggestions anybody has but we got a very active uh, veteran student center great leadership there you know veterans that have been there for a while trying to help the next veteran up a little bit give them a hand up Thank you, General. Uh, we appreciate your time today. We appreciate your service to a fine institution and your service to our country. We ask our uh, speakers to sign the book plate in uh, a book that we then donate on their behalf to Ross Elementary. The book today is Egg by Kevin Hanks. So I saw that sitting there and I said, 
this my reading assignment? Or was it a <laughs> we'll ask you to sign that, and uh, also because we believe uh, you are a good egg and are doing some amazing work and exemplify many of the core rotary values that uh, we hold ourselves to. We have a four-way test coin there for you as well, and would encourage you to keep that and uh, remember those uh, values. And when you see those exhibited. Um, from someone else, pass that coin on and encourage them in that as well. So that four-way test coin is yours. Thank I'll you. Like I'll do that. Thanks, Mark. Thank, Thank you sir. all. The general mentioned that he does have a meeting in Olathe, so he won't be able to stay after work to answer <clears> questions. Um, if you are part of the fundraising committee, please stand up for the district conference. So that would be Grace. Uh, Linda have both have squares, and so if you're interested in supporting the district uh, convention, district conference, please see them, and uh, if you have any questions or a slip to turn in, feel free to talk to Dick Knoll, Anita Wolgast, or Blanche Parks about that as well. Uh, with that, uh, next week we are right back here uh, for our club evaluation. We'll be right uh, here in uh, Maynard Conference Center. Uh, please make every effort to attend that. That is an opportunity to shape the future of this organization and to uh, give us uh, your feedback and we're open to that and we're very very interested in your feedback so thank you with that let's say the four and a half way test and conclude <laughs> of the things we think say or do is it the truth